welcome back everybody and today we are going to finish up chapter 25 and really this course today we're going to be looking at PowerPoint presentations we're going to be looking at graphic aids which means pie charts bar graphs line charts and, and those things that will help you be able to better communicate your data so let's go ahead and start today with the uh, ending portions of chapter 25 Okay, everybody, welcome back, and we are going to finish up Chapter 25, and really this course as we take a look at some of the other elements that we will need to know to be able to present our data. Now, last time we looked at the research proposal, the prospectus, and the elements in it, uh, but this time we're going to take a look at how to present our data in a way that people can better understand what it is we're trying to communicate. Now, when we're looking at these types of aids, we're looking at graphic aids. And graphic aids, uh, again, this is not going to be anything profound today, uh, but we're going to be taking a look at just some basic ways to uh, put our data in a form that people can understand and graphic aids are pictures or diagrams used to clarify complex points or emphasize a message and should always, in be, should always be interpreted in the text. So uh, when you're doing your graphics, whether it's a pie chart, a bar graph, uh, whatever it is, a table, uh, you should always be able to interpret your data in the text using these. Now tables, as we just mentioned, are the most useful for presenting numerical information, especially when you have several pieces of information that have been gathered about each item discussed. And then you have here the table number, titles, uh, stub heads, banner heads, footnotes, and source notes. Now you have had plenty of tables to look at in the textbook. So really all you need to do is to go back and take a look at how data are presented uh, with tables in your textbook, but they give you a few examples here. The first one uh, talks about the parts of a table. You have at the top the table number, uh, title. On the side here on the left, you see subheads and footnotes. So really you encapsulate your data, uh, what it is you're wanting to uh, represent or talk about, and where your sources are using this type of graphic aid. And here they're looking at total retail new passenger car sales. And they're comparing domestic inputs, Japan, Germany, and others throughout the years. So this gives you a concise, uh, complete, and interpreted uh, way of describing data. And again, there shouldn't be any room for doubt. You should know exactly what you're looking at by the way that the table explains data. This is just another one, online activity uh, by age group, and you see here from 12 to 70, uh, they give you the different types of online activity that's conducted, so that would give you a representation of that type of table, and this is a cross tabulation. You're looking at age group and online activity. Here you have a statistical test. You've seen plenty of those in our textbook. And this gives you from the business uh, to the advertising management and then the formula and the outcome. And notice here too on um, all of the slides so far, at the bottom you see what we see is the source. That's your uh, resources or those are your references. This is uh, several cross tabulations in one uh, table. You see here age, uh, sex, uh, which looks at the characteristic. And uh, you're looking at level of highest degree. And then you can go across from total persons to not a high school graduate to a doctorate. Now charts, uh, when we're taking a look at graphic aids, Translate numerical information into visual form so that relationships can be easily grasped. You have the figure numbers, the titles, explanatory legends, source and footnotes, and then uh, charts are subject to distortion, and they show you an example of that. 
but this is a uh, vertical scale, which means that they're going from bottom to up. And here you see web survey, mail survey, telephone survey, and customer satisfaction. So you're going from one to 10 on satisfaction and it looks like they are all even uh, looking at the top scale. Uh, but then here at the bottom, you see things panned out a little bit more where you get from 7.76, which is the uh, web survey, to a little bit more with the mail survey. And then the highest is going to be, it seems like the telephone uh, survey. So uh, this is just a way of comparing uh, different variables uh, and representing those variables in a way that you can just clearly see and understand better. Now pie charts show the comp composition of some total quantity of a particular time and each angle or slice is proportionate to the percentage of the whole. So as you see here when you're looking at a simple pie chart you've got the units sold and uh, the dark blue is 49% at full price, 19%, and then 32% with 50% off, 20% off with 19%, and uh, so forth. And here you can use uh, comparisons, U.S. energy consumption in 2004, uh, U.S. electric uh, generation, 2004 and you just see here the different slices and how large the slice is and of course the larger the slice the greater the percentage. Now line graphs show the relationship of one variable to another. Uh, the dependent variable generally is shown on the vertical axis uh, and the independent variable on the horizontal axis. And then you have here a simple line graph, multiple line graph, and stratum chart, which we'll take a look at. This is a simple line graph. It just shows a linear uh, progression uh, from um, 1960. The billions of dollars spent has increased throughout the decades from 60 to um, right around the 80s. It was fairly stable, but from the 80s, all the way up to almost uh, 2015, I would estimate, uh, it skyrocketed. And here you have median age of mo uh, motor workers or motor vehicles. You have a multiple line graph which shows you uh, comparisons. Uh, and here they show a comparison of cars and light trucks to the median age and um, uh, when it looks at years. And you see here that uh, uh, cars have increased while there's been a dip in light trucks uh, around 2001, uh, but it looks like it's bouncing back or is at least stable as of 2005. Stratum chart, as you can see, are like waves, and these will show you the same thing. They're just showing you percentages uh, of the uh, uh, of whatever it is they're looking at in here, the cost of regulation. In uh, environmental reg uh, regulation, you probably uh, see that at the top. That's the very top one. And then uh, the very bottom looks like paperwork. And it's just a variation um, uh, on this chart that you can use to compare how other things pan out in relation to uh, other elements that you see here on the chart. Bar chart is fairly simple. It's very common. And uh, this one uh, goes across a horizontal axis. Uh, teeth whitening, bonding, 7%. Uh, laser treatment for veins. And this is uh, adults who have undergone cosmetic treatment. And then the type of treatment uh, they indicate here. And then at the bottom you have footnotes. So this, was, this is how you would do a simple bar chart. The good thing about these things is that in Microsoft Word, you can um, look it up or you can uh, uh, create bar charts or pie charts. Really, it's just a matter of plugging in the data and uh, uh, the 
computer will do the rest. And that's what I like about it. It's just the simplicity of it. Subdivided bar chart. This is uh, uh, showing you by the uh, height of the uh, variable, how much of the bar it uh, constitutes. So we see here 2000 average retail price, I guess, of uh, gas, I would imagine, or oil, 1.48 a gallon. And 46%, uh, it looks like, was uh, crude oil. 28% uh, percent of the uh, price is federal and state taxes and going on and so forth. And look at how it's increased at 2011. Uh, so 66% uh, of what we're consuming is crude oil and uh, taxes and federal and state taxes have decreased, it looks like. And everything else seems to have decreased, too, in 2011, other than the amount of crude oil that we're consuming. Multiple bar chart is, again, you're just comparing uh, variables to from 2007 to 2008. Uh, these were the best-selling cars, and at the bottom, you see the legend. And this is what a legend is. It's the uh, individual variables that make up that whole uh, composite and you can compare how uh, cars were selling based on uh, make uh, from 2007 to then 2008. Bar charts show changes in the value of a dependent variable. It's plotted on the vertical axis at discrete intervals of the independent variable which, are, which will be on the horizontal axis and then you have subdivided bar chart and multiple bar chart. Now, the oral presentation, it shouldn't come as a, a surprise to know that you need to look the part. If you are there in a professional business meeting, you need to be dressed in a business uh, type of um, uh, dress or, or suit. Uh, be prepared. And that means rehearse. I've seen people who come and they are not prepared and it's a disaster. I have taught public speaking and most of them don't even concern themselves about the speech until that morning. They may go around or go and rehearse at one time before they get up. Uh, so prepare and rehearse. One of the things that I have done when I was learning the really the basics of public speaking when I started having to do it I would stand in front of a mirror and I would rehearse that speech now you don't want to rehearse it verbatim you want to go over it enough times that you are confident knowing what it is you're talking about uh, you can use bullet points and the bullet points should not be there to be the speech but it should help guide you in your speech so uh, going over it enough time so that you are comfortable with it, to me, is crucial. Adapt it to the audience. Know who your audience is. If you're not going to take the time to know who your audience is, then you're looking at a surefire way to have a bad presentation. If, and I've mentioned this before, if the people are already knowledgeable with uh, your material, uh, then don't try to go through the uh, basics of explaining everything and defining everything. They know all of that. What you need to focus on are the things that they're not aware of, that they need to know. Uh, don't read to the audience. Uh, one of the most frustrating things for me is to watch people who are presenting who never look up because they're constantly reading from a script. So make sure you know that material enough to where you're not having to just read it verbatim from a card or a sheet of paper. Use graphic aids effectively. They're there and they serve a great purpose, but there is a thing called overkill where it can affect the quality of your presentation. So use them to complement what you already know and what you're trying to point out. Don't use it as a substitute for you and then speak effectively and convincingly. 
you know, if they see that you're not convinced with the material or that you're uncertain about the material, you're not going to convince them. So practice, uh, practice, practice. Know your audience. Rehearse it enough and know it enough to where you can talk about it without having to read. And again, use the graphic aids as a uh, way of highlighting or supporting what you have to say instead of being the focus of what you're saying. A PowerPoint, you can talk to a lot of people who will give you different advice on PowerPoints. The 10, 20, 30 rule, uh, 10 is the optimal slides for a presentation. Uh, that depends on the presentation. Uh, 20 is the number of minutes to actually present the results. And 30, at a minimum, use 30-point font. Your font needs to be readable. Don't use 12-point font on a uh, PowerPoint slide. People in the back and even some people in the front probably won't be able to read it. So make sure, and if you're uncertain, then put your PowerPoint up on a, uh, on a screen and wherever you're going to be presenting, see if you can get access to that room and take a look at it from the back row. They also tell you don't use black backgrounds and white fonts. Uh, I've never done that. As you see here in this slide, you have a white background or off-white background with black uh, type. So, you know, I would use that as the, uh, the, the go-by. Another thing, too, that we see here, they have a picture, uh, your money, and it looks like a shadow below it. Don't go overboard with clip art with uh, graphs and bars to where it just overwhelms the person. I don't use clip art unless it's absolutely necessary for most people, especially in academics and in the professional world. They see clip art and the embellishment of these slides as a way of trying to distract them from what you're trying to say. In other words, they think you're trying to uh, divert their attention away from you or your speech and be focused on the artwork. And I've seen PowerPoints where ants would march across the screen, fireworks would explode, all of that. There's no need for that. Your PowerPoint is there to support you, not to supplant you. So keep that rule in mind, especially when you're taking a look at uh, 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 trying to present a professional uh, presentation. And also, now, now also, when it comes to the presentation, you want to make sure that you don't kill them with PowerPoints. You know, there, you don't want to make your whole presentation a PowerPoint. You want to be able to put only the pertinent information on that PowerPoint slide, uh, but let the rest of it be you. And this way you can engage them more. You're not a slave to the uh, presentation, uh, but that you've got a professional presentation with just enough slides to inform them, but not to overwhelm them. Well, today we've seen a lot of the material that you should have already been used to by looking at this textbook. Uh, we've seen plenty of tables, we've seen pie charts, we've seen statistical data represented in tables. So what you have seen today is just really what we've been covering, uh, not only in this course, but probably other courses that you're used to. Well, that's all we have for today, and that's all we really have for this course. Don't forget to make sure that you are uh, prepared for the final exam. I've already indicated the uh, uh, instructions for that. Uh, you have the uh, final exam study guide already posted. So you take care. It's been a great uh, several months having you. God bless you in your endeavors, and hopefully I'll have you again in other courses.